Good morning. Well, the reason I brought this back with me is not to tell you what a wonderful houseplant it is, it's to tell you quit trying to grow ferns as houseplants. Ferns aren't houseplants. Ferns are patio plants, and uh, they're always going to be hard to grow inside. So this is an example of what not to do with houseplants. But uh, anyway, that's our topic for this morning. How many of y'all have houseplants now? How many of y'all have killed a fair number of houseplants? And now, yeah, okay. Um, so many things to tell you about keeping plants indoors. Uh, one of the first is always remember no plant evolved inside of a house. We put them inside and no plant is truly happy long term inside of a house. So we have to match them up with the best spot, the best conditions we can, but every plant you have would love to have a little rest out on the patio every now and then. And uh, and I, they're just there are very few house plants that I would ever really come to think of as permanent plants inside. Now I'm going to tell you a lot about how to choose them and how to care for them and how to make them last as long as possible. But very few plants, other than your grandmother's pothos ivy or maybe a sansevier or something like that, is not going. To, there's not going to be a plant that's going to grow well in your house for 30 years unless you just really, really, really work hard at taking care of it, but plants do an awful lot of good things in our homes. Uh, there's actually a book, I don't know if we've got them in there, we usually try to keep them. It's called How to Grow Fresh Air, and it's by a former NASA research scientist. And of course NASA is fairly interested in how to make good clean air, and this guy wrote just a long, long list of both different house plants that do well, talks about the different toxins. Everybody thinks about plants as being good for the air because of course they absorb carbon dioxide and give off oxygen, but actually they have found, they found that green plants were better filters at taking toxins out of the air than anything NASA or anybody else could develop. And our homes are so full of toxic things and uh, as a matter of fact the EPA I think recently identified indoor air pollution as one of the top ten health threats in the country. And the more energy efficient we make our houses, the tighter we close them up, the more garbage we breathe every time we take a breath inside. The majority of the furniture made these days is made out of particle board, at least that's what the basic part of it is, and they have a veneer on the outside. That stuff gives off formaldehyde and all sorts of really toxic things your carpets, your draperies, your upholstery, everything is outgassing, oh, everything from formaldehyde to organic alcohols to benzene to a lot of these things that if it was in the workplace, the EPA would say, you can't breathe this stuff, it's too toxic for you, and yet they let us put it in our homes, the flooring, you name it, there's just an awful lot of crud in the air that you're breathing inside your house and plants are simply the best way on earth to clean that air up. So it's great to have them inside. Plants also in the workplace tend to just create a better ambiance. A lot of years ago when I lived up in Dallas, I, uh, the company that I worked for, we were putting plants into office buildings. And I remember one in particular, we did Procter & Gamble's regional offices up there and the office manager was a fairly good friend uh, over time. And he told me at one point, he said, uh, you know, the productivity in our workspace went up about 35% after you put the plants in. He said, it just, people are just happier. People just feel better. And he said, our productivity went up and said our number of sick days went down. It just made it a much more comfortable atmosphere to work in. So plants are a good thing to have around. They're a good investment. Um, but there is a lot to be said about knowing how to choose them and a little bit about how to care for them. And probably the number one thing in growing a plant indoors is putting it in the right amount of light. People have problems with plants, they blame bugs, they blame overwatering, they blame all, just a huge range of things for the problems, but in the great majority of cases, it's simply the plant is not getting the proper amount of light. In most cases, it's not getting enough light. And light is the only source of energy for plants. Fertilizer, that's just raw material. You know, the food you eat wouldn't do you any good whatsoever if you didn't have a digestive system. 
Fertilizer, that's great for plants, but it does absolutely nothing for plants except in the presence of sunlight. So having the right amount of light and having the right type of light is the number one most important thing for growing plants indoors. A lot of people want to rely on artificial light. They say, well, I put it real near the lamp or I put it right underneath the, you know, a light. Most light does absolutely nothing for plants. Plants are very picky in the color of light that they see. I mean, when we look, you know, at, at sunlight, you know, it just looks like light, so to speak. But when we look at a rainbow, we can tell that sunlight is actually made up of all the different colors of the rainbow. If a plant was looking at a light source, all it would see was blue light, and maybe a little bit in the red end of the spectrum. The blue is what, as they say, excites the chlorophyll molecules. It's the blue light is the source of the energy that plants absorb. The red light has a little bit to do with flowering, but with house plants, for the most part, we're not concerned about day length and flowering and things like that. But uh, the blue light is what a plant uses as its only energy source out there. And, of course, sunlight has plenty of that wavelength of light in it. Ordinary light bulbs, incandescent light bulbs, which, by the way, will be going away over the next few years, thank goodness, but um, the ordinary light bulb produces almost no light whatsoever in the blue end of the spectrum. It's almost all yellow and red light. I learned this a lot of years ago, totally by accident. I didn't even know what I was seeing, but I grew up spending a lot of time living with my grandparents in the summer, and they had a, a chandelier with those, uh, you know, prism light cut glass. And I thought it was so neat because there were always a couple of extras that had either fallen off or I think maybe they had a couple of replacement ones. And as most kids do, you know, we discovered that you could take one of those prisms and you hold it up to the sunlight and you could see the rainbow in it. Really neat, right? Well, I thought, I'm going to show this to some of the family, so I took it and said, look at the rainbow and held it up to, you know, a lamp. And the only part of the rainbow that was there was the yellow to red into the rainbow. And no matter how I turned it, no matter how I moved it around or anything else, I couldn't see the whole rainbow. There wasn't any blue, there wasn't any green, there weren't any of the other colors. And a few years later, found out, well, that's because that tungsten filament is totally incapable of putting out light in that color range. And so as far as your plants are concerned, that ordinary lamp light is just invisible to the plants. You're getting absolutely nothing out of it, and you're not helping them by putting the plant underneath that lamp on the table or whatever else. Now, fluorescent light is different. Fluorescent lights tend to put out a fair amount of light in the blue in the spectrum if they are the right kind of light and if they are fairly new bulbs. Um, and as you know, if you've ever shopped for fluorescent lights, there are quite a few different kinds. There's warm white, there's cool white, there's daylight white, there's your so-called plant lights. Pretty much in that order, ascending order, that's where you get your really good quality light for plants. Warm white, fluorescent bulbs don't put out very much light in the blue end of the spectrum. Cool white puts out substantially more. The best of the reasonably priced bulbs uh, are what they call the daylight white bulbs. Those actually put out enough blue light that they really do the plants a fair amount of good. If cost is no object, you can pay about five times as much for the quote plant light, whether it's a grow light or the Duratest or the Vitalite or a lot of different names are sold under. You certainly don't get five times as much benefit from them as you do from the daylight white. I mean, if you are, you know, into growing African violets and showing them or whatever else, and you don't mind spending exorbitant amounts of money on your hobby, yeah, go ahead and buy the so-called plant lights. But for most of us, if we want to put something in our homes that is easy on our eyes, and I mean it's the best light to read by or work by or anything else, but daylight white is what you want to choose for fluorescent light bulbs for the bath or anywhere that you might have uh, the fluorescent bulbs. I don't really haven't uh, found a rating source on the new compact fluorescents, which are what are ultimately going to replace incandescent bulbs. And I guess I just need to get a prism and go sit there and look at a bunch of the different compact fluorescents. I know that they will have, you know, produce at least some blue light, but I'm not sure whether one brand.